I was having a new thought Holy Ghost moment, so you know she <laughs> my, 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 my sister came over to me, Dr. Bill, I didn't know what she was saying, but I was having a moment, so I wouldn't <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I apologize. I told her to go sit down. <laughs> All right. So how you Amen. Amen. I say. Huh? <laughs> y'all can say what y'all want to say about being on the West Coast, California, Berkeley, Oakland, but y'all got some Memphis in y'all. Y'all got some y'all got some Mississippi, some Mississippi mud in y'all. Let me make that plain. You know, my swagger name is uh Baba Memphis Will Coleman. Huh? BMW. <laughs> So just give me a moment. And hello to everybody who's there in cyberspace, cyber center, heart and soul, etc. I want to give honor to the living one. I also give honor to uh, Reverend Dr. Andrea Earl to be in this space as she's getting that much needed rest and healing, etc. Yes. We all say yes to that. Indeed, 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 my dear and good sister. And to all of you who are present, we got a packed house, if y'all don't know that. I don't know how many out there. We got a packed house this morning on Resurrection Sunday from Victory Sunday. Last Sunday to Women at the Crossroads on Friday. Yay. To what did she know? What did she know? I like saying that. What did she know? Not what did she believe. What did she know? On today. Where's that image? There's an image I wanted up on the screen somewhere with her and uh, Yeshua. Oh, yeah. How y'all like that? I want something that's more representational or what they most likely look like. Y'all see what I'm saying? Give credit to uh, that's Janet McKenzie who did this artwork. You can go to her website, JanetMcKenzie.com. Of Yeshua and Mary of Magdala. That's the city she's from, okay? She's not Mary Magdalene. She's, she's really Miriam of Magdala. So uh, I don't know if you have Bibles, but if you do, and if you don't, that's good. I'm going to go to John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And I am going to read it and add some of my own inflections. Is that Okay. Jazz it up a little bit like that music was going. And I want you to pay close attention to what's going to be read. The title, of course, is uh, What Did She Know? Subtitle, Science of Mind, Miriam of Magdala, and the Resurrection of Jesus. Science of Mind, Science Knowing. Science is knowing, Latin, knowing of the mind, consciousness. Science of Mind, Miriam, his close companion, Yeshua's I'm going to say more about that. Very close companion. Very, very close companion. Very, very, very close companion. And the resurrection, which means to be, to stand up again from a reposed position of Yeshua. And I'd like to read these verses in this. And I want to thank my amen. Baby's here. Don't y'all stop. Keep it going. You know, smiling because I know I know we kind of like <laughs> I know we keep that equilibrium, but babies bring in disruption. <laughs> they bring in disruption into cool, calm collectiveness. And having grown up myself in the sanctified church, you know that don't bother me. We had babies and, and grown up babies too, shouting and making sounds. <laughs> I was one up speaking in tongues, right? And the spirit gave utterance. <laughs> Very African too. Very African, trying to find another language to replace the one that we lost. Uh huh, uh huh. Chapter 20. And this is worth reading. As I said, I'm going to nuance this. Earlier on the Sabbath day of the week, while it was still dark, still at night, Mary or Miriam of Magdala came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, who's unnamed, the one whom Yeshua loved, and said to them, They, 
Notice that. They, somebody, they, them, have taken, let's say, the sovereign or our sovereign out of the tomb. And we, so there's somebody else there with Mary, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter, must have been younger, and reached the tomb first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Peter's, Peter's like, I got a wall. <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> then this disciple, he bent down to look in and saw, pay attention, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon came, wait for the others to catch up. Simon came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there. This is what Yeshua had been wrapped in earlier, right? <clears throat> And the cloth that had been on his head, like Lazarus the mummy. Remember that from the last week? Mm -hmm. And not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself, neatly folded. Like some of us who like things to be neatly folded and can't stand for them to be sprawled out. Anybody in the room like that? Amen. Uh, somebody else had done this. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first, but didn't go in, I'm not in that, also went in, and he saw and believed. It do, he saw, it done, he saw, it then, and he believed. Epistusin, now pay attention, saw, believe. For as yet they did not understand the writings, it says the scriptures, but it didn't tell us which scriptures it was that they didn't remember. They did not know the writings that he must arise from the dead. I mean, is it from Daniel? Is it from the book of Enoch? We don't know for sure because it's not identified, but they didn't believe. I need, I need us to get this, that the disciples did not believe. Okay? Now, they, they did not believe. But then when he saw this particular one who's unidentified, okay, he began to believe. Then it tells us in verse 10, the disciples, i.e. the two of them, returned to their homes. I ain't doing anything else. Okay, man, let's go on back home, man. She done woke us up all this time of day. <laughs> Just some empty clothes there. <clears throat> but Miriam stood outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. They're gone. Miriam is still there. They went back home. Miriam is still there. One believed, but still left. Uh-oh. Miriam is still there. And she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Yeshua had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. Now, you heard what happened with Peter and the other disciple, right? They saw, but they didn't see any angels. Now, this is important. And they left. Oh, I just had a revelation. You want to see something, you got to stay somewhere. Mm. You want to see something, you got to stay somewhere. And you got to stay a little bit longer. So, and this is the beautiful part. <clears throat> they said to her. Now, the English is not adequate. Woman. I mean, you know how we say that today. Woman. No, no, no. The Greek says gunai, G-U-N-A-I, gunai. The Hebrew would be isha. And I'm going to go ahead and say it because I don't care about being a heretic. Gunai can be translated either as woman or wife. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? Isha can be translated as woman or wife or companion. Everybody with me? Okay, I said it here. That's right. And she said to them, again, repeating what she said earlier, they have taken away my sovereign one. Y'all see what I'm doing? They've taken away my sovereign one. And I, not we as earlier, but I do not know where they have laid him. This is just in grief. Then, she, when she had said this, now check this out. 
As soon as she said it. So you speak, and then something happens. She said, she turned around, and she saw Yeshua standing there. But she did not know it was Yeshua. We'll get into what that means, but as soon as she said it, he appeared. What did she know? And what did she know about the power of her words? Yeshua said to her, again, Gunai or Isha, which can mean woman or wife or companion, if that's too strong for you, based on your theology. <laughs> and this is what he asked her. Why are you weeping? And whom are you looking for? Companion, why are you weeping? And who are you looking for? Then it says, supposing him to be the gardener, because remember he had been placed in the tomb Friday, what we call Friday, in the tomb near a garden. It says, sir, or mister, kurie is the says in the Greek. If you have, now listen to this right here. If, you got to get this, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away all by myself. That's dedication and commitment. That's an undertone right there. I don't care who else don't show up. They gone. The other two brothers gone, but I will take him away. Tell me where he is. I want to know, and I'll take him away. And then... Yeshua said to her, <laughs> Mary. Maybe say, Mary. You know how you talk to somebody, you got to get their attention? But you got to get their attention with recognition. Because maybe this was the Barry White voice, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turned around. And forgot all about the Greek narrative. She said, <laughs> she said in Hebrew, or I don't mean, she says, Rabboni. That means my man, I mean, my teacher. <laughs> she, now she did, she said, my teacher. Woo! And the text tells that means didaskala, teacher. But something else happens that the text is <laughs> not right in here. She didn't just say that. At that moment, she grabs him. Now I said, she grabs him. Well, how do you know that, Doc? Because what follows? Jesus said to her, don't, don't hold on to me. <laughs> That's what he says. He said, he said, don't hold on to me. Y'all laughing, but this is real. He said, don't hold on to me. <laughs> because I have not yet ascended to the Father. This is another notation. Jesus very seldom uses the word of the divine name. He uses the word of familiarity and closeness. I have descended unto the Father. Which are in heaven. He says, but go to my brothers who are hiding. I'm adding that part. And they're hiding for a reason because there's a hit out on them. Let's be clear. Uh -huh. They're next on the list. Let's be clear. Now, the Romans Praetorian, they didn't play. If they got in Jesus, they were looking for him. They were looking for him. So they're hiding. So let's not be too hard on these brothers, but that's what they are. They're hiding. Go to my brothers and say to them, I. Now, now it's a process. He just said to her, I have not ascended. Now he says, I am ascending to my father, Abba, Abi, my father, and your father. I am ascending to my strong one. Is the word back into the Hebrews is Elohim. I'm ascending to my strong one and your strong one. The one who's able to make things happen. I'm ascending to that one. Now notice also at this point, Yeshua is not identifying. With the deity. Yeshua is saying, I am ascending to my father and your father, my strong one and your strong one, in a way telling them to be of good courage. And then he says, after that, Mary Magdalene, and there are different accounts now. In some accounts, it's Mary Magdalene by herself. In other accounts, it's Mary Magdalene and the other women are at the tomb who see the angels. And I want you all to pay attention to the fact that the disciples don't see anything. Did y'all get that? The disciples don't see anything. The women see. And Mary sees. And then Mary is the first apostle 
because apostle means somebody who's sent with a mission. So Mary is actually the first, she's not just a disciple, she's the first apostle to be sent back with good news. She's not the 13th disciple, she's the first apostle. Oh. Y'all, y'all listen to me what I'm saying? And so Mary went and announced to the disciples who were hiding, I have seen and heard, I have seen our sovereign. And she told them that he has said these things to her. Now, if you read the Gospel of Mary, which there is one, she goes into detail about what it is in the conversation that she and Yeshua had. That's one that's not in our canon, but it is one. There's a gospel about, it, about Mary. And she talks about the details of, of the transformation that's happening with his body and the insights that he shares with her and the transformation in the different places and spaces where she ascends also in consciousness. And so this is what she, what did she know? She knew him and she knew his experience. That's what she knew. And then it says, and this is worth reading. Then that evening, on the same day, later on, the doors of the house were closed, and the disciples met in a locked space because they were afraid of the Judeans who were, had that hit out on them. And Yeshua appeared and came and stood among them and said to them, Irene who mean, pox will be. Shalom, Alechem. Peace be to you. Not just peace, wholeness, well being, and spirit, soul, and body be to all of y'all. And then he said this, and he showed them his hands and his side where he'd been pierced. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the living one. And he says to them again, Peace be with you. In the midst of disturbance, peace be with you. In the midst of your fear, peace be with you. In the midst of hiding out, peace be with you. Well-being be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And then I'm going to stop right here where he says, and then he says, it's like a benediction, he says this. He breathes on them. <sighs> like we were doing earlier. He, see, this is why breath is so important. That's the ruach. That's the divine feminine breath. Y'all know Ruah is feminine, right? It's the divine feminine breath of nearness and closeness. It's the Shekhinah. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the holy divine feminine breath of life. Ooh, in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your trepidation, in the midst of your hiding out, I need y'all to breathe and receive the holy feminine breath of life and renewal and regeneration and resurrection. Yeah. And then it says at the very end, I'm going to go down to the very end and I'm going to come back and talk some more. Now, verse 30, Yeshua did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, his students, which are not written in this book. It'd be too many, eh? not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe, that's the first step now, you don't know yet, but that you may believe that Yeshua was the Mashiach. He was the promised king of the Judeans and ultimately of the world, and that he was the son of the strong one, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. And his name Yeshua means the living one saves, the living one heals, the living one makes whole, and the living one resurrects. That's what the name Yeshua means. So the name is a participle, not a noun. The name connotes a process of coming into knowledge and awareness. Now, having said these things, and you all got the context, let me walk on out with this. So, on last Sunday, because I'm talking about a new paradigm and a different paradigm. On last Sunday, I said, instead of Palm Sunday, let's think of it as Victory Sunday. And remember, I said that there's a woman named, another woman named Mary, who's the sister of Martha, 
These two are the sisters of Lazarus, and that Mary commanded Yeshua to come and heal Lazarus because they said, the one that you love, your brother, that's the Greek word, your brother is sick. And Yeshua, for whatever reasons, because he's afraid too, let's get it real, they got that hit out on him, he's afraid, because this brother had teased him early in chapter 7. He said, oh man, you so bad, why don't you go on to Jerusalem, bro? <laughs> yeah, you said, no, no, yeah, y'all go to Jerusalem. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm, I'm the son of somebody. Anyway, then so but he, <laughs> he wasn't quite sure. <laughs> no, that's a moment. That's a moment now. When people want to take your life, you know, all that talking kind of goes to the subside for a moment. So, well, okay, y'all go on up there. <laughs> kind of see what happens to y'all. And then I see if I'm going to go. <laughs> and so. By the way, we get to chapter 11. Here, though, she, a woman of means, a wealthy woman. Remember I said these were, these were the women who were the matrons. They were bankrolling and financing the movement then as now. That's who they are. Women who were unmolested. People knew better than to mess with them. That's who they were. Read chapter 8 of Luke, first three verses. You'll see all the way to the house of Herod. That's who these women are. Women who had political knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Knowledge that they got at the dinner table and in the bedroom. Y'all feel me? They had specific knowledge. So, she sends for Yeshua. Yeshua delays. Then Yeshua shows up. Martha comes out. She's grieving, but she comes on out and says, you know, uh, you've been here. And then Yeshua says, well, you know, I'm the resurrection and the life. You ain't been acting like, but yeah, I am. And then, no, he wasn't. And then... He said, do you believe? She said, I believe. Mary holds back. Then she comes out and she greets him with respect. And then she says, if you'd been here, he wouldn't have died. I sent for you. You didn't show up. And so then Jesus cries. We love to say he wept because he was sad. He wept because she also chastised him. And then, I tell no, the sister chastised you. You're going to be weeping for more than one reason. <laughs> and then. Of course, Lazarus is resurrected. Remember, I said this too. Yeshua is not the first person to be resurrected. It's Lazarus who is resurrected first. And it's Lazarus then who's at this banquet the next day. And she, with all of this money and resources that she has, that she's been financing, she breaks open a year's worth in value of all and begins to anoint his feet and wipe it with her hair. And Judas, with his jealous self, who's been stealing off the top, that's what he's been doing, who's been stealing money off the top, even though he's the so-called treasurer, is jealous or pretends to be jealous because he's not the alpha male. We get that too. And Jesus says, leave her alone. And then the next day, this is important, she anoints him like, like Samuel anointed Saul and David. I want to get the comparison. Not the priest, but this woman anoints him. I asked the question, she a priestess, think about it. And then the next day, he goes into Jerusalem on that donkey as a victor, like Julius Kaiser coming into Rome. That's a declaration of, I am the one. I'm the one, and I'm coming to you front and center. And then, of course, what ensues from that point forward is what we call Holy Week. And, as I said on Friday, for those who either were here or heard us, on Friday we have the women again. Peter's there, but Peter did not. As a matter of fact, this is funny, Peter. I think Peter, at that third time, I don't think Peter just said, I don't know him. I think Peter put some expletives up in there. Look, I done told you I don't know this man. Because <laughs> it's getting hot. Just the average people recognize Peter. You know how it goes. The dignitaries don't know Peter because he's just a regular man. But to the average person, the women, it, oh, there we go. The women especially who see everything and know everything, they say, no, no, you're one of his disciples. I know it is. I, 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 I don't know him. <laughs> then he hears the cock crow and he, he goes away. I want you all to pay attention between Peter and what goes on with Mary, too, because there's some tension here. So then on this episode, the women, <laughs> stay tuned. On this episode, the women have been there with Joseph of Arimathea. And with Nicodemus, the secret disciple, and they have buried Yeshua in this place in this garden. And then we're told, as I said on Friday, these women or this woman who's not afraid to be out at night and to be unmolested. Not afraid and are just that courageous and audacious. 
Because she knows something. Because she's been listening and paying attention. Ah, she comes at night and she's there. And as it says, she goes to the tomb and what? He's not there. Just like he said he would be. He's not here. But she doesn't assume authority at that point. She goes and gets the elders, the men who hide him. <laughs> But Peter and the unknown disciple, and they run to the tomb, as we are told here. And the disciple, one stands there, doesn't go in. Then the other man who catches up, puffing and puffing, then he goes over there. <laughs> he goes over there, and he doesn't see the body. Now, I want you to pay attention to this part. Is it that he couldn't see because he couldn't see, or is it that he couldn't see because he didn't want to see yet? You see, perception is based on what you're also willing and ready to see. Y'all feel, y'all feel that? Perception is based on what you're willing and ready to see. And maybe since he wasn't ready to see it yet, he couldn't see. So he and the other disciples, as I said, in one account it says that when the women came and gave the report, they laughed at them. She said these are a bunch of women just gossiping. That's what they said. They don't know what they're talking about. Any sisters for me with that? Anyway. <laughs> they leave and go back to wherever it is that they're hiding for security. And then, as I said before, what does she know? See, Gnosis, we say we're Gnostics. We say we're New Thought people. Gnostics, Gnosticism pertains to having a certain type of knowledge. It's a type of knowledge that can look inside of things and see what is not apparent as though it is real. And to see it as though it is real is to make it very real. And to act as though it is very real. And this is what Mary, Miriam knew. She knew that what she'd heard, what she'd seen, what he had done had to be true. And if those other things were true, then what he told them and her privately also had to be true, that if he was planted as a seed in the ground, he would resurrect from the ground. And so she stayed there. She was persistent. And then when she looked in, she did the same thing the others had done. She looked in, and she saw two messengers, one to the head, one to the foot, because she wanted to see them. And then they asked her, now, now, here's the other thing. When you really see something, that which you see will communicate with you. Mm-hmm. So just as she saw them, they saw her. Just as you see it, it sees you. What the bleak do we know? We know the particle looks back. That's what we know. And so the, those particles look back at her, and, and they spoke to her. Woman or companion. And then as soon as she said, oh, where is he? Ah, you speak, and then it happens. She turned around, and there he was. But she didn't recognize him yet because she's still traumatized. But even when you're traumatized, you can have vision. Ooh, 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 what? Even when you're traumatized, you can have vision. Oh, oh, oh. So she's traumatized because she don't recognize him yet. Right? And she said, but she, in her traumatization, she said, look at him. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> they have hid him. I don't know where he is. But if you just tell me where he is, I will get him and take him all by myself. I ain't going back to get Peter because he's hiding. I ain't going back to get the other disciples. I ain't going back to get none of them. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna become Wonder Woman. And, and take him uh, and <laughs> take him with me. That's some kind of woman. I, I know we. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got you. I, I got you. I'm gonna take him with me. That is a statement by itself. I'm going to take him with me. And then Yeshua speaks to her in a voice that she's familiar with. And in a dialect that she's familiar with. And he says, Miriam. Everything else melted away then. All doubt was gone. 
All trepidation was gone. All second thinking was gone. There was any. And she just grabbed him. She's hugging him. She's, she won't let go. And that's when you say, <laughs> I know you're glad to see me, but don't hold on. Because Yeshua apparently is going through an alchemical transformation. That's what's happening. See, that body is, is got to get stabilized. That's what you're saying to it. You got to get stabilized. I'm, in, I'm still in a liminal place here. I haven't yet ascended to the Father who transforms and makes all things new in a different way. And then go and tell my brothers that I am ascending to the Father. Of course, this is a metaphor. You know that. He's still on earth. I'm ascending to the Father. But in consciousness and in my DNA and in my cells that are being reconstructed, I'm ascending to my Father and their Father. Now Yeshua is reconnecting them to my strong one and their strong Yeshua is reconnecting them. And then later on, when she goes back and delivers the message, plus the secret teachings that Yeshua had conveyed to her in that conversation, he shows up. Now, we need to get this, beloved, metaphysics and issues. And I'm going to pause right here. The body that he showed up in was a real body. It was not a spirit that showed up in that room because he asked them. Check this out. And another place he said, give me some food. So it's a real body that's being transformed. It's a solid political body that has been transformed. And then after they are rejoicing, he tells them in his presence to do what? Receive. Well, peace be with you. Peace as in wholeness be with you. And then he tells them to receive, as I said, that divine Holy Spirit. Holy breath, holy ruah, life-giving power because these brothers were weak and they needed themselves to be resurrected and to be created again. The new consciousness. And we know Thomas shows up. He says, oh, man, I don't believe none of that stuff. Uh, no, no, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a doubt. I don't believe none of that stuff. Man, if I don't see his, uh, I don't see his body, if I can't put my hand in, it, in, it, in the place where he was nailed and in his feet, y'all ain't telling me nothing. I ain't hearing it. So a few days later, Yeshua shows up and answers Thomas' question. And, but the story ends with them being commissioned. Now, after Mary, after the companion, after Gunai, after Isha. And just by the way, I'm going to stop right here. Isha actually means in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, companion, because Adam is created as Ish. And then Isha is constructed as the companion. And that's why with those two images up there, because she's the companion in the new reality of Yeshua. Are you all listening to what I just said? You can tell them I, I said it. <laughs> I'm going to stop right there. What have we learned? What I hope we've learned in this uh, week is that contrary to popular rhetoric, and in conjunction with seven last words and 14 stations, we need to remember the power and courage of those women. <laughs> the persistence of those women. The extraordinary faith and knowledge of those women. I said this Friday, there's no other person in the Bible who interacts more or says more positively with women than Yeshua. Not Moses, not Elijah, certainly not Elijah, not Elijah, not John the baptizer, Yeshua, and not the deity per se. More than anybody else in the whole text, Yeshua is the one man who interacts with more women positively. And I think he got it from his mama who raised him right. So, beloved, I'll pause here. I ain't never ended. I'm always in process myself. I'm going to pause. They gave you this show me the 10 minutes. I'm going to pause. 
let us never forget that the first apostles sent one were the women who stayed and the women who persevered and the women who were sent to tell the others he's risen. It was the women who were sent to tell the others, he's risen. It happened. He did just what he said he would do. And we heard the message, and now we pass it on to you. Blessed are you, living one strong, one sovereign of time and space. We thank you so much on this resurrection day that Yeshua has risen from the grave, from the tomb. From a quote unquote death. And at the same time, we give you thanks for the women and for the woman who conveyed the message to others who believed what she had come to know. Amen. 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 Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Aye Bobo, Aye Bobo, Aye Bobo. And for those of you who don't know, Aye Bobo is a Haitian spiritual term for praise the living one. Thank you all so much, heart and soul.